Hi, I'm Alex Wilson. And I'm Alex Sirig. And I'm Jeff Deverett, filmmaker, teacher, consultant. And this is Filmmakers Ask. All right, fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so going to the very beginning, um, I'm trying to make an indie movie, say, and what are the first steps that I should be thinking about in considering when I'm trying to piece together this movie? So, do you want to make money with this indie movie? Yes, and ideally. Is, okay. If you want to make money, because, you know, you could do it just because you want to share a message or make a movie or something, but if it's about a commercially viable, financially successful movie, you should think about who you're going to sell the movie to. All right. The first thing is you need to know who your audience is and whether or not you can do a good marketing campaign to them. Because if you, even if you make the best movie in the world, if you don't have good marketing, they're never going to see it. So if you want it to be financially successful, think about who you're going to sell it to. And by the way, if you cannot figure out who your audience is going to be before you make your movie, maybe you should choose a different movie to make. I tell this to filmmakers all the time. They say, no, 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 no. This is the movie I want to make. And I say, but you just finished saying you want to make money with it. And I'm telling you this boring drama is not going to have an audience and you're going to lose money. And so if you got to decide, is it the movie you want to make or do you want to make a more commercially viable movie that will resonate more with audiences? So that's the first thing to do is choose a very marketable movie. Okay. And then when I'm putting aside money for marketing, like, is that where I'm putting most of my money or where, where do I kind of want to focus That's on? That's a good question. Look, the more you can spend on marketing, the better chance you have of being successful. But you also have to balance it. You have to make your movie, right? So you want to spend as much on production as, you know. So I say spend as much on marketing as possible, but try to make it no less than 20% of your budget. So let's say if you're making, say, a movie for $500,000 and you have $500,000, use 20%, which is $100,000 for marketing and $400,000 to make the movie, if you can do that. Now, as filmmakers, you're going to want to spend most of it on production because you want to make the best film. And I agree, you got to make a great film. But tuck away that money for marketing because you're going to need it to do it marketing properly. And um, it's very tempting to spend it on production, but then, then you make this great movie and you, you don't have any money to market it. And you say, why did I spend it on production? I should have tucked it away. So almost forget about it. Like take that money, hide it, give it to somebody else. <laughs> Literally, don't even give yourself access because you'll be so tempted to spend it in production. But yeah, if you could, look at if you could spend more on marketing, if you could spend say 500,000 on making the movie and three or $400,000 on marketing it, then yes, you will have a much better shot. Mm -hmm. But try to keep it to no less than 20%. Okay. And when you like were for making some of your first indie films, like what were your biggest mistakes? Like what have you been able to learn from the process? In the making or the marketing? Uh, both. Okay, the, ma the making, um, the mistakes I primarily made, well, remember, I did not start as an artist, as a filmmaker. I mean, I have a law degree and a finance degree. Um, so I came in through the business side. So everything was always about distribution for me. Um, so even when I was making the films, yes, I was the producer, but I didn't know about cameras and lighting and lenses and all the artistic stuff. I had to learn that kind of the way you guys learn distribution. You have to learn that sort of by experience and YouTube videos and watching people do it and reading. Um, so some of the mistakes I probably made, I didn't even know I was making because I didn't know how to make a movie, right? Mm -hmm. I just hired people to make a movie and I knew that the movie I wanted made and I knew the story that I wanted to market, um, but I relied on them. So I'm going to say I spent probably way too much on my first few films because I just relied on other people and they said we need this, this, this and this and I thought okay that's what you need we have to do it. Now I realize when I started, when I learned all that stuff and I started doing it myself, you, you actually don't need all that stuff. You know, you don't need 10 people to do lighting on a low budget film. You need five or whatever the case may be. So the budgets that I had earlier on were too high and I had to, you know, I could have cut them back a little bit. Now today it's that much easier to make movies because the equipment, like for instance, let's just talk lighting. 
I mean, most of it is portable LED lighting now, whereas it used to be you need generators and these big honking lights <laughs> and setups and, and trucks and all this kind of stuff. Now, a lot of people just carry their lights and one little LED light can, you know, is magical. So all that stuff is a lot more cost effective. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, you know, who knew? You know, I mean, back then, I can't, that, that wasn't the case. Technology has changed, obviously. Look at cameras. Cameras change every year and they get more efficient and quicker. But my biggest mistake in making was spending too much at the beginning. Okay, now in distributing, at the beginning, I came from distribution. So I understood, but back then when I started making films, distributors did all of the marketing. Today, they don't do marketing anymore. That's where the, the industry has changed a lot. So um, because I was this distributor, I just assumed I was gonna do the marketing for my films which is what I, but most indie filmmakers back then also assumed that because the distributors did do the marketing. But the big difference now is that distributors don't do the marketing. You need to do it yourself. Okay. I'm gonna jump off that. So right now I'm doing crowdfunding, which is I'm using Seed and Spark to crowdfund $12,000. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good target. So my first question is, how much should I expect to get? How should I allocate that money? And what's a good way to actually advertise the crowdfunding itself? Okay, those are good questions. First of all, is the crowdfunding for development of the movie or production? Um, so far, we've kind of decided to use almost all of it for marketing. For marketing. Because okay. currently the movie is almost at like a, you know, like two grand of a budget. Like it's at two grand and we don't really need to spend much. So I we're see. like, we might as well just crowdfund all the marketing money. So are you telling that. in your crowdfunding campaign, are you going to say to the donors that, that that's what it's going to be used for? Yep, pretty much. Um, what we've said, um, well, and again, we go back and forth on it. Right now it just says marketing and production, right? And we've kind of recently been like, hey, maybe we'll just use it all for marketing, honestly. So that's kind of where I do need to know, I'm like, should I allocate some of it for production? Um, but yeah, in the case, I'm willing to just say, hey, it's all for marketing. Okay, um, I mean, that's great. That. That's great. But you have to say it in such a way that the donors are going, I call them donors because, you know, they're... they're yeah, because that doesn't target their self-interest anymore, which is they want to fund a movie. Correct. So it's kind of, it's, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll just throw in like 500 for production just so I can keep the production and marketing title. But again... Well, you can call it production and marketing because mm -hmm. they, they go hand in hand. You know, you got to finish the movie in such a way. Um, so... Do you just sorry, say the questions again in terms of seed and spark? Yeah, um, so one of the, the biggest problem right now is crowdfunding, like actually advertising the crowdfunding. So I'm not sure how to get that out to audience, like get that out to the people who want to fund the movies. Yeah. Because okay. there's not enough people on the platform itself who are just going to browse through the and find mine eventually. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I mean, how would I do that? Fair enough. But just for the audience, just out of curiosity, why did you choose Seed and Spark? Which I like that platform, but you could have done Kickstarter or Indiegogo or something else. Why that one? Mm, um, I don't remember the details, but essentially it became down to I get to keep most of the money. I get to... You can do up to... Se if you get 75%, I believe it is, on Seed and Spark, then you mm. get to keep that money. Yeah, it's also the threshold. Is, the threshold, yeah. The threshold, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you hit 75%, I think... It, 50% 50, 50 or 75, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Whereas on Kickstarter, you have to hit it all. In Indiegogo, you don't have to hit anything. Right. Um, but Seed and Spark is for, you know, is, is designed only for films. So it's a good platform. Yeah. Okay, so getting people to donate on a crowdfunding campaign is tricky. Mm -hmm. I mean, these days it's primarily social media. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's yeah. outreach to family, friends, friends of friends, and people who might take an interest in what you're doing. Like, I happen to know your movie, the topic is, you know, sort of the mm. the mm. Greek life thing. So maybe you're gonna have to go out to Greek life somehow um, through some social media influencers in that area to get them. I know, and it's not easy. No, This no. is not easy, okay? This they, is not they, an easy business. Seedon Spark literally suggests to send out like, God, it was like, thousands of emails to family and friends and like use those mutual connections I'm like I don't know if that's gonna work but, but that's kind of what it is because the, the first the friendliest crowd is going to be family and friends I mean those are the ones who want to support you and see you do well mm -hmm. um, but it is a lot of work and sometimes you just don't have thousands of connections you know how many people know more than so that really does work like those connections they actually donate because it was just hard for me to imagine them actually donating yes that does wow work. okay yeah it does you know if you're asking them for, you know, you know, there's different levels, obviously, right? So mm -hmm. one person may be the executive producer, maybe you can get two or three thousand out of them. Everybody yeah. else, you're gonna get a hundred or fifty or twenty-five or something. It's different levels, obviously, right? Yeah. Um, but that does work. 
I mean, that's primarily where most crowdfunding comes from is your inner circle. Now, if it's a cool idea, and yours is a cool idea for Greek life, um, just it's hard to get their attention. It's just hard to get people's attention on social media, especially in Greek life, because they want to see all different stuff. But you probably have some good footage, parting stuff and all this kind of stuff that they would relate to. Mm -hmm. So you cut a really, really tight concept reel that's really fun. And they say, hey, this is cool. This is a movie that, you know, should get made and seen. And you don't have, you can't conquer the whole world. Just put it out to, I don't know, a couple of fraternities and sororities who will be supportive. And if you have a few hundred, you only need a few hundred people, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need tens of thousands of people. You need a few hundred. Now, sometimes you have to put it out to tens of thousands to get a few hundred. But if you can get targeted stuff where like you go to one friendly fraternity that has 500 members and says, hey, we'll support you and we'll put it out. The president says, hey, I'll send out a, you know, some social media post or something and ask the brothers to support you for mm -hmm. each for twenty five dollars. That that'll go a long way as opposed to you doing it yourself. You, you need to bring people in to help you. Okay. So now, in comparison, how does my, another idea we came up with was advertising it like on TikTok, social media, paid advertising for the actual crowdfunding campaign. How does that sound in comparison to that? I like the other way better, the personal friend thing. It because, is. Because yeah. that's super generic and very hit and miss. Mm. All right. So if, this is what film marketing is all about, what you're talking about. You see, mm. you're talking about just crowdfunding here to get money to make the movie and, and to market it. Mm. Ultimately, you're going to be doing the exact same activity to market the movie to try to sell it to people to, mm. when, you, when it's finished. So you, you're tapping into sort of the same concepts and the same audience. Um, can we keep going, Sally? Um, yeah, you have probably about five more minutes. Okay, that's fine. God, I'm used to extending these backdoor reservations to like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so tapping into that audience, you know, is the same concept as you're going to do for marketing, but it's not easy. All mm -hmm. right. It takes a lot. Like I keep saying, making marketing the film is way harder than making it, as you're finding out. Making it, you know, hey guys, going to shoot you. Hey, we got the cameras, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's not easy, but as you see, marketing it is a lot tougher. Yeah, it is. Um... It's just a domain that's constantly seems like I'm every time I explore a part of it, it just kind of slips out of my hands. Um, but yeah, no, it's definitely a, a something I need to learn. Yeah, well, it's something again. All filmmakers want to be artists; they just want to make the movies. Nobody wants to do the hard work of selling them and and getting the funding. That's what this is all about. Yeah, no, absolutely. So you're doing the right things. Just don't expect it to be easy. Okay. I'm setting up a pitch for a distributor. How do I do that? A pitch for a distributor to take your movie? Yes. The pitch is simple. Hey guys, can you please watch my movie? If the movie's good, they'll take it. Okay. If the movie's not good, they won't take it. They, it doesn't matter. And or or, hey, I have this movie and I have this crazy great marketing campaign that's going to go with it. So that's the other component. The pitch is, I made a great movie. Please watch it. They'll judge whether it's great or not. They don't okay. care what you say. It's your baby. They're is that a is that a poster? Is that a line? Is that a log line? That no, you're it's to the them? movie. Show us the movie. Like it's a trailer. You're showing them. the No, trailer. you're showing them the movie. The distributor's via not, via what? Via after you finish the movie. The distributor's not going to license your movie until they see it. They these are low budget indie movies. Okay, I guess I'm having about. a hard time imagining. So it's you're pitching to someone in a room. Is this? You're not pitching. You're you're basically if you are let's say you're at a market, a film okay. market. Okay. You walk into a booth. You have a meeting with them. You say, hey, I made this great movie, and I'd like you to distribute it. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, send me the movie. I'll watch it. If I think it's a great movie, then we can talk about distribution. You don't have to sit there and tell them how great your movie is, because they're not going to believe it anyways. So are you send you're sending them the whole movie? That's correct. Wow. All but right. they're going to have to sell it, so they either like it or they don't like it. Okay. I mean, that's the most important thing is you made a good movie. Okay. Now, the second most important thing is... You have a great marketing campaign connected to it. So if you go in there and you say, hey, not only did I make a great movie, but I have, you know, 50,000 people on social media who know about it, who are anxious to see it. And when you put me on a platform, I'm sending that whole crowd there. And here's what I've done. And here's what I'm going to do to promote it. That's very enticing for a distributor to hear. Okay, so then I guess the follow up to that is what's the difference between the people who kind of fail their pitches and the people who are more who who stands out? How do you stand out in your pitch? How are you It's not really a pitch. The pitch is the the movie pitches itself. 
Okay, you can't tell, you can't convince a distributor you made a good movie. Mm. They need to decide by watching your movie. Okay. Okay, so you don't have to even talk about your so movie. So the competitive ground is having a better movie than... Correct. Hey. Okay. I've always said, first and foremost, make a good movie. Okay. Now, secondly, if you want to enhance the fact that you made a good movie, have a great marketing campaign. Have some funds tucked away, have a great strategy, maybe already have an audience because that's what the movie needs it needs an audience and they're not going to spend a lot of time and money getting you the audience but if they see that you are going to spend some time and money doing it that will make them very enticed to want to handle your film so so the, the it's you're not really pitching you're saying to them please watch my movie and judge and hopefully you'll think it's good and here's the great marketing campaign that we're going to attach to it. So if you distribute it, we're going to send all these viewers to the platforms that you're putting it on. And do you believe that there's success in, like, say you don't hear from them? Do you email them? Do you follow up? Is that going to change anything? Or do you think that that's not going to change the fact that they like the movie or not? No. They, look at, here's the thing. Most of the, half of them aren't going to even watch it. Okay, you're going to send it to them. They're going to say, hey, we're going to watch the movie. Half of them won't. Actually, more than half. Probably two-thirds won't even watch it. Very demoralizing. But they might watch your trailer. Okay? Of the third that watch it, half of them, half of those third actually say they watch it. They only watched five minutes of it. Five or ten minutes. All right? So, but it's low-budget indie film. And it's... The reason that they don't care that much is they'll watch five minutes to see, is it in focus? Is there a decent production value? Does it look decent? Or is it really, really, really low budget, really bad? If it looks decent, then maybe they'll go through, you know, jump through it every 10 minutes to make sure that it's always in focus, the sound is there, that type of production value, right? Do they care about the story? Probably not that much, okay? Because it's a low budget indie film and it's not going to change their world. They license hundreds of these every year. So to you, it's special. To them, it's just one of many, many, many. Mm. You know, and I hate to belittle it, all right? So, but ultimately, you see, if they, they're, and most of them are gonna what we call ghost you, not even get back to you, all right? So the two or three that do get back to you to say it's a great movie, I mean, you know, if you wanna play a game, and you shouldn't because, but it's a great game to play, then you could say, hey, what did you think about that part after the person did this? And they'll <laughs> say, awesome. well, um, you know, um, just one second, I've got to take a call. Like, because you can clearly see they didn't watch the movie. Mm -hmm. But don't worry about that, all right? I know it's pathetically sad that the person <laughs> who's going to sell your movie didn't even watch it. No. Okay, sometimes they watch it, but frankly, in a lot of cases, they don't need to. They need a good trailer. They need a good poster. They need to know who the audience is. They don't have to love your movie. They, they don't need to love your movie. Okay, They just need to know that there's an audience out there that will look at I did distribution for 25 years, and I didn't love all the movies I sold. Frankly, I'm not a big horror guy. I you know watch a few horror movies, but I don't watch a ton of them. But I, I recognize and appreciate that there's a huge audience for horror films. So just because I don't like them doesn't mean there's m not millions of other people who do like them. So don't worry about me watching it. Worry about the audience watching it which speaks to the marketing campaign. So you want to speak to your distributors and make sure they're paying attention. Get their attention with telling them about the audience. That's the key. Okay. Um, oh, God, I'm going to try to open this question up, but um, it's very, very broad. Um, something I've always had in the back of my head was I always wanted to be in the studio system. I always wanted to be a part of it. I always wanted to be a producer or a showrunner, whatever that means, right? And I always kind of thought in the back of my head, what if this indie, if I distribute a movie successfully on a platform and it becomes like a little notch on my resume that's, it might be impressive to people who are hiring in the studios. Um, is this something, is this a realistic transition? Is it something I should want to have an indie film on my resume that I've distributed so that I can become a producer or showrunner in the studio system? Yeah. Is that okay. something? By the way, a showrunner is a, yeah. Means, okay, is a person who runs a show. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, the mo if you want to go studio route, mm -hmm. then you have to decide, like, when you're, in the, when you're an indie person, you're doing everything, okay? You're a one-man show, you're doing your production and your distribution. Mm -hmm. When you're in the studio, you're either in one side or the other. You're either in the production department or the distribution department. You're not in both. 
unless you're running the studio, okay? Which you're not doing anything, you're just managing. Could you explain what a showrunner is? Because I, I... Hold on, let's hold on for okay. a showrunner for okay. a second, okay? <laughs> so if you want to go into production, which is what you likely want to do, mm -hmm. the making of the content, okay? As opposed to distribution, the selling of the content. Mm -hmm. If you want to go into that, then focus your all your energies on making a darn good movie because that's what they're going to judge you on. The production department is going to look at your movie and say, hey, this guy knows how to make a good movie on a limited budget. This guy's got talent. He's got artistic talent. All right? So don't worry about whether even it got distributed or not, whether it failed, you know, financially, because mm. they don't care, the production department. They care that you have talent to be able to make a good movie. That's what the production people are looking for. Mm -hmm. So make sure you make a darn good movie. Now, if you want to go into distribution, then, you know, focus a lot on trying to make your indie film you know successful against all the odds in the world because that'll be and you'll say to them hey I know how to do marketing I know how to navigate the system I know how to take your lower budget stuff and make it successful if that's what you want to do just make sure you have the right narrative because they're different departments so the production people are not going to be impressed at all that you did your own distribution mm -hmm. they're going to say why'd you do that they don't do that they've never yeah. even talked about that right the distribution people aren't going to look at your movie they're just going to look at your sales mm -hmm. if you want to be in the production department focus on the craft of filmmaking. You want to be in distribution, focus on the skills of selling. Okay, what does a, a showrunner do? Basically manages a show. Um, people think, oh, showrunner runs around like this. No, the running means operating, running, like managing. Mm -hmm. They should be called show manager. Okay, they're the overview of all the of all the writers. They make sure the direction of the show goes in the right direction so artistically it stays sound. Somebody's got to manage the whole show because you got multiple writers you got multiple directors you got lots and lots of different people involved somebody's got to give it a direction and a vision that's what the showrunner so is. it's creative continuity they don't have anything to do with the financial success the budget most on a studio level thing it's creative continuity okay. that's what it is okay now if you're doing it yourself then you're involved with everything like you know if you're a showrunner for an indie small production then mm -hmm. yeah you're going to be involved with financial and creative but in a big studio it's all artistic. You are focused on making sure that the show is creatively consistent. Okay. Yeah, I know that's great. Um, which of your films was like the hardest to market and why was it difficult to market? Okay, that's a great question. Um, my newest film, which is called God Incorporated, is by far the hardest to market. But I knew that making the film. So, so here's the thing as a filmmaker, okay? Even though I talk business, 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 you know, I am an artist also. Like, I do make my own films. I mean, I've written four of my own scripts. I've directed three of my movies. Um, you know, I'm very involved artistically in the way my movies look. Um, so I made six movies for financial, you know, like those gymnastics movies, they're all about marketing to an audience, making sure that we connect, that they view, and all this kind of stuff. But the seventh movie got incorporated. I did it because I wanted to do it. That was an artistic adventure for me, less so than a financially oriented venture. So, you know, even my brother said to me, he said, like, Jeff, you always tell it, all filmmakers make their movies to be financially successful. And I say, no, no, no. I ask them, like I asked you, I said, are you looking to be financially successful with your movie? Mm -hmm. That movie got incorporated. I made it because I had a message that I wanted to share with the world. And I wanted to tell that message in such a way that might not make it the most financially successful. But I knew that going into it. But I was in a, you know, a, a comfortable position where I could finance the movie, get it made, and tell the story where I wanted to tell it without being so worried about its financial success. And the reason it's going to be the hardest to sell is because it's controversial, which, you know, might help it. Um, but it's also, you know, it doesn't have as obvious an audience. Like a gymnastics movie, it's an obvious audience. A skating movie, obvious audience. A movie about religion, I mean, you know, you could say it's obvious, but it could it's way more spread out. Um, but I love the movie because, you know, at my point in life, I had the luxury of getting to do what I wanted to do, not worry about whether or not it was going to be the most financially successful. And I still well, obviously want it to be, and I'm still marketing it, and I'm still going to do everything I talked about. Do it. like If anything, I'm actually spending more money on that one in terms of social media and influencers and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I knew making it that it clearly was not going to be as obvious and it was going to be a more difficult marketing campaign. But I still made it because I wanted to make it. 
and that is the artistic side of me, which you don't see too often on my videos. <laughs> Um, and I love it. It's like all my other movies. It's like a child to me. All right. That's good to know.